Hi guys, I am Nobukumalo. If it's your first time here, welcome to my channel. And if you're coming back, thank you for your continued support and welcome back. Thank you for the good reception on last week's video. I had my husband on it. If you haven't watched it, make sure you watch it. Um, and it's nice that you guys enjoyed that thing that we're doing, the two of us. Um, there are a bit of some technical glitches in the video. So that's why some of you might have watched one video. Put your comments there came back and saw a different video and your comments were in there i'm so sorry i had to take it down because there were sound issues because it was me and my husband so something weird happened with the sound so i had to take it down and re-upload but it was the exact same video in terms of content right um but yeah thank you and i must say i'm so grateful that i have a loving and a respectful community here there are many times where people have sort of disagreed with my views on things but no one has ever done it in a mean or condescending way. Everyone just puts up their opinion in a very kind and respectful way. That's something that I really appreciate because one of the reasons why it took me long to start a YouTube channel was I was afraid of the possible bullying, right? Because people can just drag you on here. But so far, I have not had anyone bully me or disagree with me in a way that is, you know, offensive. So thank you so much for that. I don't have tea with me here today, but it's still Sunday tea, okay? Some of you might be coming to Sunday tea and you're saying it's, it's all about marriage, 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 this, marriage, that. Um, but a lot of these lessons are actually very applicable to people who are not married. It's just that that is the stage of life that I'm at. So I can speak better to the experiences that I'm going through now vis-a-vis -vis the experiences that I went through then. And I'm hoping that even if you're not married, you can learn from my mistakes, learn from my lessons, or learn from the little bit, tiny little bit of wisdom that I've gained over the few years that I've been married. So one of the interesting things that I remember leading up to getting married, um, I, I had this idea in my head that I wanted to be like a super wife, right? Like in terms of the traditional roles. I want to make sure that I stay on top of everything, that I'm cleaning the house, I'm cooking every single day, I am taking care of laundry and ironing and everything like perfectly. And I had this idea in my head of this, wife that is going to make sure that her household is taken care of by myself to the t right so then i got married um in october of 2019 and i had a gap in my studies at that time i was about to go start my master's degree so i had come from the uk and me and my husband were going to come back uh, about four months later so we moved to south africa and i wasn't doing anything for those four months so i was like a housewife you know it was, it was pretty nice like all i had to do was wake up make sure my husband was fed make sure the house was clean you know and then i just watch tv and like wait for the day to pass cook dinner and all that and it was it was fun you know and i was like you know i can i can do this wife thing man i can really do this wife thing you know, keep the house in order and everything and then we moved to the uk uh, in 2020 and then lockdown happened so uh, and we're staying in a pretty small apartment at that time so yeah i was keeping on top of everything you know laundry ironing etc that was during my masters and it was now all online fine fast forward to things open up we find a bigger apartment i start working right and still i was still trying to push it on sunday i wake up clean the house do the laundry and then later in the afternoon do the ironing and then in the evening do the cooking and then also find time to grab my laptop and do a bit of admin that i didn't do during the week and prepare for the week and by the time i went to bed i was so fed up and what used to happen is that because of the burden that I could foresee on Sunday, I never really used to enjoy my Saturdays, my Sabbaths very very well. Because I think oh, after after Sabbath, then comes the house duties and then comes Monday. And we know, you know, we all dread Monday. So like there's this ongoing joke about how um, husbands say that, you know, wives just, they're just angry on Sunday morning when they're doing their cleaning. That, that was me. I was always like grumpy, right? And so I got to a point where I was like, why do I feel the need to um, overperform even at the expense of my health, even at, at the expense of my, of my mood and my mental well-being, right? And I realized that a lot of it is because of the good, the good teachings that we got from our parents, especially our mothers growing up. You know, especially as African girls, we're always taught that, eh, like don't sleep until like the sun is way way up what type of a wife are you going to be you know 
Oh, my one, see you go pig, I won't fast over, I see you iron. How are you going to iron your husband's shirts? How are you going to cook? Your husband won't like such food. So, like, we grew up with these ideas being instilled with us that we need to learn how to do things so that we are the perfect woman for our husband, right? And so we go through life teaching ourselves that we have to be able to be a superwoman and to handle it all and that at all times your household and making sure that you single-handedly handle your household becomes the priority of your goals right and this and this is a good skill that our parents taught us but i feel sometimes we fail to then apply them to the circumstances that we find ourselves in at this time so for example um in my house, we last had a maid when I was 12 years old, right? My sister had gone to boarding school. It was just me, my mom, and my dad in the house. Uh, we were all at work or at school during the, the weekend. We'd come back fairly late, and it was just dinner. and So there really wasn't much need for, like, a house helper, right? Sorry, did I say maid? Oh, I'm sorry. We've moved on from that word. It's now helper. So from from 12 i i learned to take care of you know things it's not that i used to take care of everything but i used to share the load with my mom so i would take care of my laundry and then would do the cleaning together and the cooking and she would also take care of her of her laundry and my dad's laundry and so i i quickly at a very early age learned how to run a household and i think from that I had ideas of that one day I'm going to be doing all this in my household because my mom did it all with grace. She still does up to today. Like she just doesn't want a helper. She just says it's too much stress managing another person. It's just her and her husband. She's happy to do it. And she does it so much grace. Like she somehow finds time to do it all, to cook, to clean, to iron, even take care of her yard, find as a worker. But like she just does it all with grace. And I, I think growing up, I wish to be like my mom to be able to work a full-time job and still come home and wife and do everything and cook and do the dishes and, and all that but now i find myself in a space where i can't honestly do that without breaking down right and so i had to sit with myself and i had to realize that i am yes in terms of stage yes i'm working a full job full-time job but it's different in terms of what the job is and what it demands and requires of me. So briefly, I'm, a, I'm an attorney and I work very long hours. So uh, um, an average day of mine is me leaving home at like about 8.30 and then I'm at the office and I leave the office uh, at about 7, right? Get home just before 8. And I cannot realistically be able to get home just before 8 only to start putting, you know, um, pots on the stove, only to start cooking then and then feeding. And then after that, put the things in the dishwasher and then maybe there's still leftover work. And then I need to go to bed early so that I'm bright and fresh in the morning. It's just not possible. And the other thing is we, we think our husbands, because remember I said, we are taught that your husband won't like this. Your husband won't want a wife who ate A, B, C, D. So we go through these things and we do all this and we overperform because we think this is what our husband wants. But I remember very well that I had a conversation with my husband where I was like, you know what, I, I'm not enjoying this. It's not sustainable for me. And he was like, you, you really don't have to. You need to think of yourself as a business, as an asset and try and measure out the time versus the benefit in terms of what you're spending that time on. And I quickly realized that there is no reason for me to be shackled by this ideal that I had of the woman that I wanted to be, even when I'm in the circumstances that are clearly telling me that that was just a dream and I need to readapt right now. There's no reason for me to be a victim and a prisoner of previous decisions that I made before I had all the information that I, I, I had. And so since then, you know, we spoke about things and my husband literally was like, this is our house. We take care of it together. And I have no expectation on you or for you to be a superwoman at the expense of your your health and your well-being and your happiness and so we like we share chores we we split things up you know sometimes i handle most of it other times he does it just goes um according to like who's busy and who has the best you know capacity and so since then i have just had this idea that you know i will pay for convenience for me i am that person who will spend the money just to have something taken off my hands and and have convenience and use my time elsewhere so one of the things that i outsourced is 
ironing right i have a washing machine so i do my laundry but i hate hate ironing time aside because it takes forever i just do not like ironing so it's one of the things that i have sourced so i have an ironing service that picks up my clothes irons them, and then brings them so my mom visited last year i remember thinking um what do i do do i just pretend and do i just iron clothes uh because me, what if she judges me for you know it's a small apartment and if she might just think all I have to do is iron because I have a dishwasher, I have a washing machine. The only thing I have to do with my hands is to iron. But you know, I was like, no, you know what? I am in my house now and I want my mom to fully appreciate me for, for who I am and how I do things and to get to respect the grown-up woman that I am that has come to make decisions for myself. And so um, I sent my clothes for laundry on the day they were like bring your clothes let me send them for laundry my mom was like you pay someone to um and your clothes i was like yeah i pay for the convenience and i remember the joke she was like you know rather give me that money now and i was like nah mom just you know just enjoy the luxury and the convenience of having someone to stuff for you but surprisingly the the mental uh battle that was going in my head in terms of how will she perceive me will she think she's failed as a mother will she view me in a different light none of that happened it was all in my head she quickly accepted that oh okay this is what you guys do in your home cool and also she was here for three weeks and she saw how work how late i work and i'm pretty sure she could appreciate that there's just no way i can do it all and that because of that i have decided that there's some things that i'd rather pay for someone to take care of them and and it's fine and it's become a joke in our family where my mom just says ah no it doesn't no it's my home name no it doesn't touch laundry she outsources and and that's and that's just it so yeah this was just me venting and just saying to someone out there who feels like they have to be superwoman and do it all um you really don't have to you do not have to be superwoman you are a woman you are a human you have only so many hours in the day and in all that you need to fit a lot of those responsibilities and also find time to rest so that your mind is ready for for the next day um sometimes fun, funds might not allow for you to outsource and get someone to pay for for things that is fine but um you could change your life in that instead of feeling like you have to do everything in one day maybe you can break up your schedule and say um this week on sunday i'm only doing ironing and i'm only doing laundry and then just you know light cleaning the next sunday then i'll do the deeper this and just free up your time and space things out in the way that you do you just do not have to do every single thing 100 percent right every single day or every single week you are a human you are a woman you are a person and there's only so much you can do so forgive yourself for not being the the wife or the woman of your dreams that you thought you were going to be because life has dealt you a different hand and that's okay and you're still valuable and life happens we just learn and we grow and we readjust through it yeah so Tell me in the comment section what are some of those things or those chores that you have just decided that this is this is this is not my portion. I'm going to outsource this out. I would like to know. I did say that mine is ironing. I I I have decided that I do not iron. I outsource that. So I would be I would be keen to to hear what you guys outsource and how you've made how you've made decisions to give you convenience. Yeah, this was my Sunday tea. Thank you for watching. If you haven't watched the video from last week and from all the Sunday teas, please make sure you watch them. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.